Good afternoon, colleagues. The first item of business this afternoon is portfolio questions. The portfolio uh, this time round is education and skills. Usual request for those um, seeking to ask a supplementary to press the request to speak buttons during the relevant uh, questions. Uh, there is a lot of interest in supplementaries, so I would make the plea for succinct questions and succinct answers wherever possible. And I call question number one, Donald Cameron. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to improve access to additional support for learning. <coughs> Cabinet Secretary. All children and young people should receive the support they need to reach their full potential. Local authorities are responsible for identifying and meeting the additional support needs of their pupils. On the 30th of November 2022, we published our updated Additional Support for Learning Action Plan, which outlines the progress we have made and the further work we will take in this area to ensure all children can access the support that they need. Donald Cameron. Thank you. Um, there are around 21,000 children in school who are on the autistic spectrum and levels of educational access for them varies across Scotland. The National Autistic Society Scotland has told me that local authorities need to be better at recording different types of absences rather than using the catch-all category of authorised absences. That would better support young people and will the Cabinet Secretary look at ways in which this can happen so that more targeted support can be provided to young people on the autistic spectrum? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank Donald Cameron for, for this question. Uh, one of the aspects that we've just taken into the National Improvement Framework is around attendance, uh, but an important aspect of that is uh, ensuring that the national agencies are supporting our local government colleagues uh, to then look at uh, who is attending school, why they're not attending school, and to be able to assist people to be able to go back into school um, when it is appropriate for them to do so. So I very much take uh, the point uh, that the member is making. It's very important that we look at why children are not attending and then give them the support that is particular to them, and that includes uh, those that are neurodiverse and with autism. A brief supplementary, Martin Whitfield. I'm very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer about children with autism. The SNP 2021 manifesto said Scotland's education system should be accessible to all young people. We want all children and young people to get the support that they need to reach their full potential. We have the highest number of pupils who require additional support on record, both at primary school and secondary school. At the same time, Questions, specialist please. numbers and support are being slashed. Is the Scottish Government proud of its record at this stage, and how will it change? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, all teachers are responsible for the provision of support to pupils with additional support needs, rather than those teachers whose role is specifically related to support for learning. But I would also point out that in 2021, there was 1,036 extra pupil support assistants eh, that have been recruited, and that builds on eh, the increase the previous year and exceeds the programme, government, eh, programme for government commitment. So both on teacher numbers um, and indeed on pupil support assistance, eh, yes, there is more to do, but the government is determined to carry that through. And briefly, Beatrice Wishart, who joins us remotely. Thanks, Presiding Officer. Another of the impacts from COVID-19 has been a sharp increase in concerns about children's speech, language and communication development. And this is a phenomenon that's been recorded by health visitors. The greatest increase is found at two years old, which is a crucial milestone in speech and language development. So what additional educational learning support in children's communication development can the Cabinet Secretary commit to today to head off concerns of a looming spoken language crisis in Scotland? As briefly as possible, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, uh, Beatrice Wishart is quite right. Again, to point out to the concerns, particularly of the impact on COVID, uh, there has been um, a focus on this within government, but um, I am happy to write to uh, the member with further details, both on what's happening in education and also within health on this issue. Thank you. Question number two, Joe Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on its action to recruit more foster carers. Minister Clare Hawkey. Part of keeping the promise, we are committed to ensuring that children and young people who are looked after away from their own families and homes are provided with caring and loving foster families. I am aware that the pandemic and cost of living crisis has put pressure on foster carer capacity, and this has been worsened by the widening pressures facing the social work sector, for example, uh, with U Ukraine and unaccompanied asylum-seeking children. 
Although responsibility for recruiting sufficient foster carers lies with local authorities, we are actively working with key national and local partners to identify action we can take collectively now and in the future to improve the situation. Patrick. Thank, I thank the Minister for her detailed answer. Um, of course, a key issue around encouraging more foster carers is to ensure that the right financial support is in place. Can the Minister provide an update on discussions with COSLA around progressing the recommendations of the review of care allowances? Minister. I agree with Mr Fitzpatrick that ensuring the right financial support is in place along with practical help and it's critical to encouraging more people to become foster carers and that's why the Scottish Government is absolutely committed to delivering a national allowance as quickly as possible. We know that this has taken longer than originally anticipated and we share the frustrations of caregivers and those working with them. And I can assure Mr Fitzpatrick that we are looking at all available options to make it happen and my officials are next meeting with COSLA on Tuesday the 7th of February. And Bruce Supplementary, Ros McCall. Thank you, and I also thank the Minister for the response. Um, and I note that she's made a comment to some of the external factors, but the shocking statistics from Bernardo's last week that reveals the number of children needing foster care in Scotland has increased by 50% in the last year was not mentioned. Now, I also want to comment on that and also to ask the same kind of question. The programme for government in 21-22 said the government committed to introducing a national minimum allowance for foster and kinship care, but no such policy has been introduced, meaning that foster carers in Scotland are the only part of the question, UK please. not to receive the payment. So when will the government introduce this long national waited for minimum allowance? Minister. I thank uh, Rose McCall for that answer. I, I think I, I covered most of what she asked in her supplementary question and my response to Mr Fitzpatrick. We appreciate um, that the Fostering Network has said that there's a shortage of near, nearly 500 foster carers in Scotland and we are working with stakeholders to explore ways to include the, uh, in, increase the numbers of people becoming foster carers. And as part of that, we are willing to consider all options which may have the potential to improve the lives of children with care experience, including the possibility of national and local communications. And question three, Graeme Simpson. To ask the Scottish Government what assurances it has received that the correct procedures were used by the Board of South Lanarkshire College when it took the decision to dismiss its principal. Cabinet Secretary. Decisions on the employment status of a principal is a matter for the relevant College Board. The SFC is assured and have assured me that due process has been followed in this case. Graeme Simpson. Thank you. Well, in fact, the College Board did not follow the College's disciplinary procedures, and I have them here. The principal, Ailey McKechnie, couldn't ask questions, call witnesses, challenge evidence. She wasn't even shown any evidence against her. The outcome was a foregone conclusion, which I predicted. She was sacked, along with the clerk to the board, Brian Keegan, who wrote the rule book on college governance and was then accused in a statement of bullying Andy Kerr. And what really stinks is that there is no right of appeal. The college's disciplinary procedure says sacked employees have the right to an appeal without reasonable delay and it should be dealt with impartially. Due process has not been followed and the government needs to step in. The college EIS Question, feel, the college well somebody's lost their livelihood here. The college EIS feeler branch has just had a vote of no confidence in the board the second time Question, it's done please. this. What does the Cabinet Secretary intend to do? And given the facts, does she still have confidence in the board? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the Funding Council has provided ongoing assurance that the government improvement plan, governance improvement plan, for example, has been agreed by the College Board and is being implemented. The College is under strong leadership in the form of the current interim principal, with a new and effective board in place, and the College continues to function well. The matter of the employment of a principal is a matter for the Board, and it is important that that process will continue. If Mr Simpson would like to respond to me in writing with detailed uh, points on this matter, I would be more than happy to take this up with the Funding Council, but I am content and the Funding Council is content that due process has been followed in this case. And if there is further action to be taken, uh, then of course the Funding Council would support the Regional Board and the Board to have the facilitation to do that. Mr Simpson. 
I asked at the start for brief questions. I've had to interrupt a number of members to get them to get to questions. I would discourage you from challenging the chair when the chair has asked you to pose that question. Thank you very much. We move on to question four, Rachel Hamilton. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to tackle bullying in schools. Cabinet Secretary. Bullying of any kind is unacceptable and must be addressed quickly and effectively. Respect for all our national guidance on anti-bullying supports this. We expect schools and local authorities to use the national approach to recording and monitoring bullying incidents, monitoring locally allowed schools to identify patterns, intervene early and provide appropriate support. We continue to fully fund Respect Me, Scotland's anti-bullying service, to build confidence and capacity to address bullying effectively. And Education Scotland have completed a thematic inspection of the national approach. We will consider the findings and next steps carefully and we are committed to refreshing the national guidance on anti-bullying later this year. Rachel Hamilton. Correct, Cabinet Secretary. Bullying in Scottish schools is not acceptable. And under this SNP government, abuse of teachers in our schools has spiralled out of control, with almost 75,000 recorded acts, attacks on school staff since 2017. In my constituency, in the borders, teacher and staff abuse in schools has increased by 355% since 2017. And while st staff absences for mental health reasons have almost doubled, the correlation is clear. Having presided over such appalling levels of abuse, Cabinet Secretary, could she provide this Parliament with a plan to fix this problem that this government has created? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think the very important aspect when we're looking at bullying, harassment um, or any violence and intimidation within our schools, whether that's uh, towards pupils um, or, um, or towards staff, is to work together to be able to find a solution to that. So the Scottish Advisory Group on Relationships and Behaviour in Scotland does provide advice and guidance to ministers on improving relationships. That is the place where we work together with COSLA, representatives from local authorities um, and professional associations to ensure that we are providing evidenced advice and guidance to ensure that we are getting that right. I would be more than happy uh, to meet with Ms Hamilton if she has particular suggestions about what policies um, need to change, because I think this is something that we all take seriously. We are determined to keep under review, as I said in my original um, answer, and the um, board that I have mentioned is the way that we can work together to do that, and I would hope we could work together across the chamber as well. And briefly, Stephen Kerr. The Cabinet Secretary will have seen this morning's Glasgow Herald uh, exclusive, which has the headline, Worry Teachers Say Toxic Positivity Leads to Bullying and Fails Pupils. And a whistleblower who works in the East End of Glasgow in a secondary school is commenting on something called Pivotal Behaviour Method, which is failing, in the words of this whistleblower, the 97% of kids who are well behaved and doing well academically. Will the Cabinet Secretary investigate the failings that are identified in this whistleblower's report? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, ha I have read the reports um, in the Herald this morning, and I would reiterate again that any forms of violence um, are unacceptable. I'm not going to comment on specific cases, um, and it is up for schools and local authorities as the employers to decide what action should be taken in schools. But I've said in my original answer uh, there is um, a national um, group which looks at this, which works with COSLA, and we will continue to work with our local authority colleagues and with the professional associations to ensure that if there are changes to be made, then we take those decisions together. Together. Question number five, Michelle Thompson. To, to ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to further encourage articulation from college-based higher national qualifications to university-based degree programmes. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government recognises articulation from college to university as a key route into degree level study, which includes many learners from disadvantaged backgrounds. The Commission on Widening Access recognised the importance of expanding articulation, and we are committed to implementing the Commission's recommendations in full. Since then, we have invested in additional places for students progressing from college to university, and we continue to work collaboratively with the college and university sector and the Scottish Funding Council on articulation, for example, through the College Scotland Joint articulation group. Michelle Thompson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her reply. And, and does she agree with me that the progress Scottish universities are making in terms of the fair access is significantly helped by colleges providing higher national courses that articulate with DE programmes and that there is every reason, therefore, to further support colleges and encourage universities to further develop more articulation arrangements? Cabinet Secretary. 
Uh, well, I would certainly agree with M Michelle Thompson on this. It's in a very important way that we can widen access to higher education. Articulation from college is a key route to degree level study. Many learners from disadvantaged backgrounds will take that, as I say, and they can also, of course, study for degrees within colleges who are affiliated to a university. We're very keen to see further progress in this, and particularly for full articulation and recognition of the work that goes on within our colleges uh, to allow students to articulate uh, up to a university with that study being fully recognised. And briefly, Megan Gallagher. Thank you, Presiding Officer. A key issue present in colleges is the inability to properly assess completion rates. When the Minister attended the Education Committee in November, he was questioned by several MSPs about what he is doing to resolve the issue and when it would be fixed. Mr Hepburn said, my ambition is to do it as soon as possible. It has now been three months. So, will the Government provide an update on what progress has been made and if no substantial progress has been made, why not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am happy to um, ask uh, Mr Hepburn, who is not able to attend uh, portfolio questions today, to be able to go through this in detail um, with the member. It is a very important um, um, issue that she has raised, uh, so if she will allow, we will get back in writing to her. Thank you. Question number six, Michael Manna. To ask the Scottish Government what monitoring is undertaken to ensure that any commitments made to tertiary education are delivered. Cabinet Secretary. Scottish Government monitors delivery through normal processes set up by our tertiary education delivery arms, such as the Funding Council, SAS and SDS. Ministers issue a letter of guidance every year to public bodies setting out priorities in line with the programme for government. The Scottish Funding Council, in turn, has yearly outcome agreements with colleges and universities, which set out what individual institutions will deliver. The Funding Council tracks delivery against these outcomes and publishes various progress and statistical reports on their website regularly. Ministers and officials also regularly engage with these organisations to monitor delivery of key commitments. Michael Mara. Thank you, uh, President Officer. I mean, I, I'm pr principally concerned with what the government is delivering to these institutions. They still await any conclusion to the critical coherence review. Uh, a raft of actions under the 2017 Student Finance Report, the production of multi-year spending plans committed to back in 2021, a replacement scheme for Erasmus promised at the election, replacement metrics for widening access on the desk since 2014, when Shirley Ann Somerville held the post of Universities and Colleges Minister, the International Education strategy years overdue. Presiding officer, I could go on, but I will not. This is basic policy work that ministers are failing to deliver that is holding back the sector. So is the problem a lack of capability, a lack of energy or a lack of interest? Cabinet Secretary. Well, this government is delivering for both colleges um, and university, and that is demonstrated in the budget that will uh, follow on uh, from portfolio questions uh, today, with additional funding going to our colleges and universities. There are a number of commitments, of course, uh, that this government was elected upon to deliver during this parliamentary term, and we will absolutely have that firm intention of doing so. Supplementary, Colette Stevenson. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response. Can the Cabinet Secretary set out how the Scottish Government is supporting our tertiary sector? Cabinet Secretary. As I said in my answer to Michael Mara, one of the important ways that we are doing that is to ensure that we are providing uh, funding uh, to colleges and universities, so the net college sector resource budget um, will be increasing by £26 uh, million, pounds, and of course the universities budget will also be increasing uh, by £20 million. That's an important, um, significant um, work that this government has undertaken under very difficult financial constraints this year. Question number seven, Faisal Chowdhury. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what action it will take to increase the recruitment of people support assistance, including ensuring they receive fair pay. Cabinet Secretary. Local councils are responsible for the recruitment and deployment of their staff. During the pandemic, the Scottish Government provided an additional £240 million to local authorities to support the recruitment of additional teachers and support staff. We have since committed further permanent funding for £145.5 million a year to support education staffing. Pay for local government workers, including pupil support assistance, is a matter for councils. Despite this, the Scottish Government recognises the crucial role council staffs play in our communities which is why we supported local government with an additional £260.6 million to enable them to successfully agree a pay deal for 2022-23. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the answer. Uh, it was reported yesterday that councillors in Edinburgh will be asked 
to approve a 2.4 million cut to teaching assistant post in an industry that is already struggling uh, with retention and recruitment of staff. This news is deeply concerning. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell us now what action will be taken to protect people's support and classroom assistance job and the vital role they play in children's educational and social development? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, uh, clearly, uh, councils have not yet taken those decisions. These are proposals by officers at this point. Uh, but I would uh, point uh, to the national work that this government has undertaken um, and has been well publicised um, around teachers. But I would also say that that does also include our determination uh, to ensure that we recognise and protect the role of classroom assistants. And briefly, Karen Adam. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to set out the Scottish Government's commitment to increase classroom assistant numbers? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm firmly of the view that we won't improve Scottish education by having fewer teachers or indeed fewer classroom assistants in our schools. Our commitment remains to increase the number of teachers by 3,500 and classroom assistants by 500 by the end of this Parliament term. And we continue to provide local authorities with £145.5 million annual funding to support that ambition. And question number eight, Polly McNeill, who joins us remotely. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what recent meetings it has had with University Scotland to discuss gender-based violence in higher education. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government engages frequently with University Scotland on a range of student wellbeing issues, including gender-based violence. For example, University Scotland are represented on the Equally Safe in Colleges and Universities core leadership group, which is chaired by the Minister for Higher and Further Education. The group meets on a quarterly basis, most recently on the 16th of November. Polly McNeill. In December last year, the University of Glasgow published a report on the university staff and student procedures and support arrangements in relation to gender-based violence and found that there had been a significant increase in reports of gender-based violence by undergraduates in the previous 18 months. And Wodag Ross Casey, who led the review, highlighted serious problems in the university's processes and handling incidents with one survivor saying when she went to the student newspaper, the Glasgow Guardian, uh, that she was threatened if she took her case to the press, then she would be removed from her degree. Uh, I'm sure the Minister agrees that that, if, if it's true, is wrong. But does the Scottish Government agree that Scottish universities need to make their sexual misconduct processes open and transparent to ensure students have full confidence when reporting gender-based violence? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think it's absolutely critical um, in all uh, workplaces or places of education that both uh, students and staff feel supported uh, to report um, and also supported once they have reported um, an incident. The Scottish Government um, also funds the EMILY test uh, charity uh, to um, ensure that universities and colleges um, are not only taking this matter seriously but are acting upon that. Uh, I recently wrote to all the universities uh, to encourage encourage them strongly uh, to join the EMILY test uh, charter if they have not done so already. And I would reiterate that once again today because Polly McNeill raises an exceptionally important point that we do need to ensure that um, this is tackled and that we do need to ensure that everyone feels safe both within their workplace and place of education. And supplementary, Pam Gozo. Thank you, presiding officer. It should be common sense that under no circumstances should a rapist be allowed on a college or university campus. Yet here I am again, for the second week in a row, raising this matter. Last week, I was discussing a rapist enrolled at a university. This week, a rapist enrolled on a college beauty course. This is appalling, unacceptable, and not to mention dangerous. We need change, we need guidance, and we need it now. Will the Cabinet Secretary firstly ban suspected and convicted sex offenders from university and college campuses? And will she issue national guidance? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cabinet Secretary. 
So the Minister for Further and Higher Education met with the Principal of Ayrshire College on the 30th of January to clarify enrolment procedures and safeguarding measures in that college given uh, recent cases. This builds um, on the work that he is already leading and the previous discussions undertaking uh, around concerns uh, to protect students if other students are subject to criminal investigation. Scottish Government officials are working at pace with representatives from colleges and universities as well as a range of stakeholders with the aim of producing guidance to address those concerns. The first meeting of the working group has been arranged for the 10th of February and that will include areas such as information sharing across institutions and with regard to those already in the justice system. This again builds on discussions that the Scottish Government has had with UCAS, Police Scotland, the College Development Network and University Scotland. I'm aware also that the Minister has met with Ms Gozol on this and obviously remains happy to do so in the future. Thank you. That concludes portfolio questions and there will be a brief pause before we move to the next item of business.